We greet our friends everywhere with Chapter 7 of Nine Pence in Her Pocket, the story of Gladys Aylward. This is another in the series, Stories of Great Christians, and comes to you from the radio studios of the Moody Bible Institute in Chicago. Quietly, in as simple an act as stepping onto a train, Gladys Aylward passed over from the life of an English parlor-maid into the life of a missionary to China. A life that was to suddenly plunge her into loneliness and suffering far greater than her servant girl imagination would have been able to conceive. And her journey to China, although it began pleasantly enough, would devastate the last shred of her will, her strength, her devotion to Christ, before it released her into the forbidding land of China. But what was ahead of her was unknown as Gladys sped across Europe on her third-class railway ticket, her heart singing with the wheels of the train. Dear Mother, I arrived safely in Holland... And in a very short time, I was again on a train, a Dutch one. They are very nice and clean, but they have no cushions, only plain wooden seats. It seems strange not to have anyone at all to talk to, and the constant murmuring of foreign languages is hard to get used to. But I expect I shall quickly get used to it. They say the war is very bad at the Manchurian border. And getting worse. Yes, sir. The war is very bad at the Manchurian border. And getting worse. We will be seeing lots more soldiers as we go on to Russia. I can tell you, I am glad I am not going as far as Siberia. By the way, that English woman over there, what is she doing on this train, do you know? No one seems to know. She sits there, day after day, and says nothing. Everyone tries to tell her there is a war, but she smiles and looks straight at you. She is a strange one, but her food is very good. Du, du siehst einsam aus. Was tust du schreiben? Oh, uh, I'm sorry, I don't speak German. Kannst du Deutsch sprechen? No, I'm English. Uh, I'm from England. I'm sorry. Kann ich, mit, uh, kann ich mich hinsetzen, bitte? Oh, yes, of course. Bist du from England? Yes. Weißt du, dass der einen Krieg führen? Ein Krieg? Krieg? I don't understand. Krieg. Uh, Kanonen. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, oh, fighting. Oh, yes, I know. I'm not afraid. Wo gehst du hin? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I don't know any German, but it's kind of you to talk to me. Der Zug ist kalt. Oh, oh no, I, I'm not cold. Um, would you like one of these biscuits? Ja, danke. Danke. Ah, uh, are you going to China? Uh, China? Nein, nein, nein. Die kämpfen da. Du kannst nicht gehen an den Kriegszone. Dieser Zug wird niemals durch Russland durchfahren. I am going to China. China? Nein. Du kannst nicht durchgehen auf diesen Zug. Niemals in der Welt. Yes, I am going to China. Ihr Engländer seid alle verrückt. Yes, England is a wonderful land. Ein diesen Tage wird Deutschland das mächtige Land der Welt sein. Deutschland tut auf Wachen. Oh, that, that's very nice, I'm sure. Auf Wiedersehen, Miss. Oh, goodbye. Thank you for talking with me. Sie ist eine richtige Engländer. 
She is English, all right. But there is something funny about her. She keeps saying, China, China. She must know that this train has not gone to China in months. It turns into a troop train, a chita. And we are getting close to Siberia now. These English, who can understand them? They are a very foolish people. They are very weak people. They do not have logic. On Friday the 21st, when I woke up, I felt a little miserable, for I have now been on this train four days... And the silence and loneliness at times seems unbearable. But when I opened my Bible, it came to the Psalm 102, and I felt refreshed and strengthened and more willing than ever to follow my wonderful God whithersoever he leads me. On Saturday the 22nd, we crossed the border into Siberia. We are now in a snow-covered world. I did not think it possible for there to be so much snow. The sun is shining, and the marvel is it doesn't melt the snow. Uh, One day I had a kipper snack... And I could not help thinking what a good advertisement it would make for the makers. Something like this. Our kippers are suitable for all occasions and climates. Young lady eats our kipper snacks in the snowy wastes of Siberia. But the cold is terrible. Strengthen me. Give me new courage. I'm I'm so lonely. There's nothing I can do but to stay on this train. I've seen such misery, such poverty, and for so long no voice that I can understand. Help me, Lord, and keep me from danger, from the soldiers on the train, from losing my way, from losing heart. Здравствуйте. Не странно видеть женщину в этом поезде. Sorry, I speak only English. I am from England. I speak English a little. Oh, please, sit down, sit down. It's been so long since I could speak to anybody. I will sit. My English is not good. Speak slowly. Oh, yes, I will. Uh, uh, Can you tell me how the war is going? Uh, The war... We are coming to the Manchurian border, are we not? This train will not get you to the Manchurian border. I know. I I must change at Harbin. I get new train at Harbin. No, you cannot reach Harbin on this train. This train will stop before Harbin. Why? Too much fighting. Oh, no. Что это они говорят? Я их не понимаю. Что это? Какой-то разговор. Why are you laughing? Uh, the other travelers, they ask of you. Who are you? Where you go? Oh, tell them I'm a missionary. A missionary? See? Uh, the Bible? I uh, preach the Bible. Oh, она учительница Библии, проповедница. How you preach when you cannot speak? Oh, I'm going to China. I learn to speak Chinese. Она китайка, но не вполне. How far will this train go? Uh, the train goes. Uh, how far? I do not understand you. The the train uh, stops? Yes. Where? Uh, The train stops at Vladivostok. I get out at Vladivostok. 
all get out at Vladivostok. Why? Why? The train is for the soldiers. War. No people. Soldiers. Then I stay. You stay on train? Yes. I go to China, I stay on train, I get closer to China. Она говорит, что она остается в поезде вместе с солдатами. The soldiers, you like them? Oh, no. I told you I'm going to China. This is the only way I can go. not to have run out of paper because writing these experiences helps the time pass by when I cannot speak or be spoken to. Sometimes I feel I must talk aloud, but then I would be thought demented, so I restrain myself. The soldiers on the train are going to the frontier, and on the whole, they have been very nice. Some are not. Last night I had two officers with me, and they were very kind and treated me well. I am sure I shall reach the end of my journey quite safely, for I have a wonderful God. have stopped now and the car is quite empty. Outside it is dusk and I can see the soldiers lining up and marching off. It is quite difficult to write because the train lights have been turned off. Everything is deathly still except for the sounds of explosions on the horizon. I know the conductor and the train man must be in the small station I can see in the distance. It's so cold here and now so dark. I believe I shall get off the train and at least try to get warm in the station. Oh! <laughs> I can talk! I'm all alone! Uh, hello! Uh, uh, good morning. Oh, yes, please, but not too much jam on it. Oh, no, thank you. I'm, I'm really quite full. Have you seen my new dress? <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my father, help me. Show me what to do. I don't know what to do. Help me to get warm again. Oh, help me to get to China. And so we conclude Chapter 7 of the story of Gladys Aylward, Ninepence in Her Pocket. This is another in the series, Stories of Great Christians, and comes to you from the radio studios of the Moody Bible Institute in Chicago. (laughs) 